Facebook. Um, and it looked like all the ladies down there had an absolutely awesome time. I can't encourage it enough to uh, when these events come up, which is mainly during the summertime here in the Rocky Mountain District because of the winter and that sort of stuff, um, go to these events and you will meet friends. You will learn more about um, the people inside of this church than you ever knew before, um, especially when they start sleep talking in the middle of the night in your hotel room and, and all that sort of stuff. It gives you some blackmail that you can use a little bit. And, uh, but you also get to meet a lot of other friends and a lot of other people that uh, you can become great friends with. Uh, some of my best friends are all over the country and up in Canada and uh, beginning to go around the world now. So it, it's pretty cool to be able to just call them up and say, hey, man, I'm having a bad day. Will you help me through this? And then they'll you know, speak to you. And you'll find somebody that's like, just like you. It's really cool. There's somebody that God really wants you to just match up with. And it, it's really cool to have those friends and that sort of stuff. So if you ever get the opportunity to go on any of these retreats, to men's retreat, ladies' retreat, um, any of the youth retreats, certainly do so um, because it, it's very beneficial and it's, it's very cool um, what God would use those for and, and what God will do through those and the joy that God will give you uh, through those different things. So I'm excited to hear that you guys had that freedom of worship there and uh, praise God that's, that's certainly something that we need in our households all the time and uh, bring that to your households and, and that sort of thing. So um, praise God. Yes. And we're disappointed that those carrots were not brought back up here for a snack after Sunday night. In Jesus' name. Casper is the one that has the carrots, so praise God. We might have to have somebody run down there tonight and grab some carrots. But in Jesus' name, awesome. Well, praise God. Isn't it fun to be able to have good humor in the, the kingdom of God, for sure. And uh you know, I, I have a word from God tonight that I want to present to you. I, I told you a little bit about it Wednesday night, and um, it, it kind of goes off of this morning, and it, it's really kind of cool that it does that. And so for those of you who are not out here this morning, I want to just kind of give you a brief overview, um, like a couple quick minutes of what we talked about this morning. But basically this morning, um, we talked about Joseph and Job and how Joseph was a man of God, and he was doing everything that God wanted him to do, and he had favor in the sight of his father, and so his father created him a coat, and his, he was his father's favorite child out of the family, and so his brothers looked at, at Joseph, and they began to despise him and think, man, why is this guy getting all the good stuff while we are out here working and slaving, and we aren't getting any of that sort of stuff, and so his brothers decide to sell Joseph off. They strip him of his coat, and they kick him into this pit, and they sell him off to some people who are doing some trading and those people trade him into Egypt and he eventually ends up in Egypt and what we talked about is that Joseph these people that are around him his brothers these should have been the closest people to him these should have been the, the people there to support him when he fell the people there that would lift him up when when things were going wrong but these were the exact opposite these were the people that threw him into the dirt threw him into the ground and, and completely um caused some wounds there that Joseph could have allowed to fester and to grow. But Joseph did not allow those wounds to grow, and he did not allow those things to fester, but he, he overcame them, and he served God very quickly after that, not denying God, not turning away from God, because he realized that it wasn't God's fault that he was in those situations there. And same thing with Job. Job faced some insurmountable odds. Everything disappeared from his life, and he was going months on end with sicknesses and diseases that were inside of his life. And he could have you know, sat there and said, you know, God, you allowed this to happen to me. You're the worst God ever, so I'm not going to serve you. Just like many people in the world today will tell you, you know, how can God allow these things to happen in these different nations? How can God allow so many earthquakes to happen and so many people to die at this place or that place? And we ask these why questions, and too often it can turn us away from God. But in reality, we can't allow that to turn us away from God. We can't allow those things to turn us away from who he is because those why questions cannot turn us away from who he is. And so tonight I want to kind of adjust off of that and speak about maybe a why question as far as why am I required to do certain things or why am I asked of God to go certain places or why am I asked of God to witness to those people in my high school? Why is God asking me to do this? And there's a reason because there is a difference between a call to faith and a call to sacrifice. A call to faith and a call to sacrifice. And so that is what I'm going to speak about here tonight and relate to you the difference between the call to faith and the call to sacrifice. 
and I'm believing that God has called every single person here to that call to sacrifice in Jesus' name, whatever area it may be in. So, praise God. On March 16, 2004, MSNBC did a report on a new movement in the vegetarian community. Apparently, when this movement was first starting, they began calling themselves the New Vegetarians. I'm actually just going to read you the first couple sentences of the article from MSNBC, and you can't make this stuff up, and here's what it says. Even after five years, Christy Pugh has no trouble sticking to her vegetarian uh, regimen. The secret to her success is eating meat. Maybe it's just me, but doesn't that sound strange to anybody else? Hi, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat meat. In the article, the person they're interviewing, Christy Pugh, says, I really like vegetarian food, but I'm not just 100% committed. She goes on to say that this is my favorite part of the article, or well, this is my part of, favorite part of the article that she says, she says, there's so many reasons that people are vegetarians, and I find that nobody ever gives me a hard time when I say I usually eat vegetarian, but I really like sausage the best material ever this is something that you definitely can't make up and uh, goes on to show the craziness sometimes of human beings she doesn't say I usually eat vegetarian but I still like a good steak or she doesn't say I usually eat vegetarian but I want a bacon cheeseburger every once in a while she doesn't say I usually eat vegetarian but ribs are my weakness no her weakness is sausage Probably one of the weirdest meats out there, in my opinion. Um, I, I don't know. I'd rather have a steak over sausage. So understandably, these neo-vegetarians began to cause some conflict in the vegetarian community. The real vegetarians began to stand up and say, look, you guys have got to change your name. You're making the rest of us look bad. And so the new vegetarians, these people who don't eat meat unless they're really, they really like it, uh, changed their name. And they began to call themselves... Um, I don't know exactly how to say this. It's flex, flexitarians. Flexitarians is the name that they gave to themselves. Flexitarians. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. You can't make this stuff up. Seriously speaking, when we look at our relationship with Jesus, are we flexitarians? Think about the quote by Christy Pugh. Not the sausage one or the other one, but the one where she says, I really like vegetarian food, but I'm just not. 100% committed. How many times do we say, I really like this Jesus thing, but I'm just not 100% committed? And even if we never say it or uh, consciously think it, how many times have our lives proclaimed this sentiment? We even say things like, you can ask me to give to the poor, but don't ask me to forgive that person who hurt me. Or I really like the idea of going to church, but my money's already spoken for. I'll serve you Jesus, but don't make me preach, please. All it boils down to is, I love Jesus, but I'm just not 100% committed. The call to faith versus the call to sacrifice. If we look at scripture here, Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, we can begin to see where this call to sacrifice truly comes into play and where God really begins to use this. So let's turn to Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. This scripture here is interesting because Jesus is talking to his disciples and to people who should know the deep things of God and know about serving God and know about who the God is that they worship. And so in verse 23, Jesus says unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Verse 24, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same will save it. So this scripture here is fascinating because these are the people, that, you know, when we read this scripture, we often think, well, yeah, this is an awesome, awesome preaching message that Jesus is giving to people and he's telling them to commit to a deeper walk and so many different things. But the crazy part about this 
is it's almost like Jesus is giving his disciples a second calling. Because if you go back to the beginnings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see Jesus calling his disciples out of, off of fishing boats, out of certain areas of their lives, and he's saying, hey guys, step away from that so that you can come and serve me. Leave that fishing behind so you can come and serve me. And these guys, they willingly let go of that fishing. They willingly let go of their jobs and their families and the things that are there, and they say, you know what, I'm going to serve God, and I'm going to walk after this God that is here. So they willingly let these things go, and they begin to follow this God, and yet at this point, down the road, Jesus brings out another message that says, hey guys, it doesn't look like this has all been given up yet. It doesn't look like this has all been committed or, or turned over to who I am or, or what I am. And so we see a difference between these two that in the beginning, Jesus had a call of faith to his disciples saying, hey, you know, it's important that you come to church. It's important that you learn who I am. It's important that you get into my word and begin to, to understand these things here. But the second calling is a calling where Jesus really begins to call them to a sacrifice. That just letting go of those things in their life that, that they thought were good to let go of, that isn't just enough. But Jesus begins to say that, hey, if you really want to do something great for this kingdom, if you really want to see great things happen, then you are going to have to let go of even more. And you're going to have to deny yourself and pick up that cross that I have given you. And this is the difference that we see in the Bible between a call of faith and a call to sacrifice. And God definitely has called every single person here tonight to a call of sacrifice because he is asking us. We, we know who he is. We understand that we need to come to church and understand what he is doing. But God has called us into something that is deeper. It's just like walking into the high school and saying, well, God, why, why do I have to, to act the right way? God, why, why do I have to abstain from certain activities? God, why do I have to deny these things in my life while everybody else is going out there and having fun and doing great things? Well, the reason being is because God is calling to sacrifice. God is calling to something that is deeper. And when we step into that call of sacrifice, God begins to use that to transform our world and to change the world around us and the people that are there as well. He also uses it to change our lives and the things that we are involved in here. And so Jesus has a call of sacrifice to every single one of us. Not just a call of faith to come and attend church and, and to look well, but a call of sacrifice to live for him in every single matter, in every single thing that we, we go forward in life. This scripture here is very important because it shows us that we have an option. He starts out with the word if. It's something that's dependent upon you. Will you do it or will you not? It's up to you. It's not up to me as, as Jesus, but it's up to you. It's your choice whether or not you want to pick this up. It's an open invitation. It says, if any man, any person will want to come after me, let him deny himself. It says any person. It's open to everybody. And it's a, a passionate pursuit saying, come after me. If any man will deny himself and come after me, it's a passionate pursuit. And then he finishes by saying, let him deny himself and pick up those things that I want him to pick up in Jesus' name. There's a couple instances in Scripture where we see people coming up to this call to sacrifice, and they realize that they have to make a decision. Am I going to move forward, or am I going to stop and not accept this call to sacrifice? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, what, whatever level you feel you're on with God, I'm not saying that, that that's a bad level tonight here at all. That's not what I'm trying to say. But what I am saying is that we must always be making progress forward. We must always be challenging ourselves to step forward. What can I be doing better for God? God, what, what can I do better in this part of my life? God, where, where can I expound on this scripture in my life? It doesn't mean that, that we dedicate more time necessarily, but it means that we dedicate ourselves on a deeper level for this God that we have around us. One of these examples, if we turn just a few pages over, is in Luke chapter 18, in verse 18. We see a young man who is going through his life, and he has found the call to faith in his life. And God has spoken to him, and this young man has dedicated to serving the God that is in this world. This young man is walking for him, and he's living by certain means that he was taught and raised with certain morals, and, and he's doing all these things very well. And so he decides, hey, I'm going to go to Jesus, and I'm going to see what else I can do to go beyond this. And God begins to put a call to sacrifice in this young man's life. 
but we never truly know what happens after this point. Luke 18 and verse 18 says, And a certain young or a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He's speaking to Jesus here. And Jesus says unto him, Why callest me you, why callest thou me good? None is good save one, and that is God. Jesus right away begins to realize the intentions of this young man and begins to turn them about, saying, God is the one that is good, not me. Thou knowest the commandments, so do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father, father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. And so then Jesus heard these things. He said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that you have, and distribute it unto the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. In verse 23, and when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. This young man was a young man who you heard at the, you know, these commandments. He was obeying all these commandments. He was obeying what God told him from his youth up. He was obeying what, what the pastor preached across the pulpit. But it came to this one matter where he just could not overcome this matter. He could not just give up this matter for the God that he served. And yet, if he would have given up that matter, we, we don't know whether or not he did later on in the scripture, but if he would have been willing to give that up, God could have done some phenomenal things in his life right at that moment in time. But he was willing to hold those riches and those things before God. Now, for us here today, I don't know that it's riches. I don't know what it is inside of your life. It may be something that is a, a physical thing. It may be something that is a spiritual thing inside of us that we say, hey, God, I, I, you know, I, I know you're really awesome and you're really cool and you're really good, but God, I just can't give up this certain movie. God, I, I can't give up the, this certain type of music. Or God, I can't give up this certain place that I go after church at, at certain times or after work. God, God, it, it's so much fun, and I get to go there with my friends, and I get to hang out, and I get to do all this cool stuff. Or, or even inside of my school, God, I, I'm involved in these clubs, and God, you know, these clubs are so cool. I, I just don't really want to give these things up in order to start a Bible study for you. But, but God, you know, I'm still serving you, God, and I, I'm still laying these things down. And too often we can allow those things to get in our way. But if we transition and we really begin to search our lives and say, hey, God, you know, I know that you have this call to faith in my life. But, God, I want a call to sacrifice. God, I want a call to the deeper things of you. And, God, I want to learn more about who you are. And I want to understand the deep things of your word so that I can go out there, Lord, and I can teach others about you, Lord, and so that I can live the most peaceful, most, most joyous life that I ever possibly could. And, God, I realize that these things are here and I don't want to give them up, but I'm going to God I'm going to lay them in your hands so that I can transition my life and I can begin to see amazing things happen in this world around me it's the difference between a call to faith and a call to sacrifice that God begins to take us from when we are just babes that the Bible says that we're we're weaning off of milk and that we begin to go and develop into something that's more mature that can understand meat and that can eat meat and we can develop based off of that meat and grow stronger in who this God is. With this call to sacrifice comes the, the meaning or the ability to listen and to obey. That when pastor or when God tells us something, we listen and we obey. That doesn't mean that we don't always pray about everything that comes into our life, but certainly we listen and we obey to that God that is there. In Jesus' name. It says in Matthew 19, 16, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? It almost reveals something deeper about this young man that he says, what, what good thing, not things, can I do in order to serve you better, God? But what, what good thing? It's almost as though this young man is coming to God and saying, Hey, God, you know, um, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty fly. I got all this stuff going right for me. But God, what, what one more thing can I do? Because one more thing is about all that I need, and, and I'll be set for the kingdom of God. I'll be set for what you want me to do. He says, what one good thing can I do for this here? And this man is asking, what's the one good thing I have to do that will give me eternal life? And he's saying, Jesus, what's the bare minimum I have to do? Can I eat my veggies and still have that sausage? A flexitarian. In Jesus' name. 
Jesus responds and says, keep the commandments, because remember, even the Gospels are written under the law. The new covenant doesn't begin until after the cross, and even after grace, we're still required to fulfill all the moral implications of the law. But that's a whole other message in itself. Matthew 19, 18, it says, uh, that gives us the rich young ruler's response, and it is a very telling response. Even though it's the one word, it's one word long, Jesus says, keep the commandments, and the rich young ruler says, which? Surely you don't mean all of these commandments. Which one are you asking of me to keep? This guy is a flexitarian. How much meat can I eat and still be considered a vegetarian? How much can I come to church and still return to the world and eat of those things as well and still be considered a Christian? That's beginning to fall into an area where the world has termed many church members as hypocrites, unfortunately. That's something that we have to avoid. But God is calling to a sacrifice. And with God, all things are possible. Yes, Jesus does say it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than to enter the kingdom of God. And some people have tried to explain that away, but it means exactly what it says. He says it's almost impossible for this person to go to heaven if he does not let go of these things that are, are holding him down. But two verses later, he says that God with God, all these things are possible. And I like the way Luke puts it in 1827. He says, these things which are impossible with men are absolutely possible with God. In fact, Jesus proves that in the very next chapter, Luke 18, the story of the rich young ruler. And Luke 19 opens up the story of Zacchaeus, the, the, this guy named Zacchaeus. And does anybody remember Zacchaeus? I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Z Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Z Zacchaeus? Okay, sounds good. Praise God. Again, something you can take home and research yourself and pronounce it however you want when you're in your household. But right now, I got the microphone in Jesus' name. Zacchaeus is seen in the next few chapters. Z so Jesus, after he deals with this young man who says, no, Jesus, I'm not willing to give up those things, and I'm not willing to put down those things in order to, to accept that call to sacrifice. Maybe that young man did later on, but we don't know for sure. But we see Zacchaeus, a, a young man who is also very rich and has a lot of funds, and he is up in a tree, and he is looking down, trying to figure out who this Jesus is that is coming through the city. And he is so hungry for this Jesus that he is up in a tree because the crowd is so thick. And he's looking down, and he's saying, man, I want something from this Jesus that people have told me that there's something crazy about this Jesus, that these people have told me that when I go to this church, sometimes they, they do burst their bubbles and they run the aisle a little bit and they jump and they shout and, and it's a little bit crazy and they speak in tongues and these things just don't make sense. But, but I want something of this. I want to figure out what this is because I, I'm believing that God can do something inside of my life. And so Zacchaeus is in this tree and he climbs down and he speaks to Jesus and Jesus speaks to Zacchaeus and Zacchaeus is willing to turn his life around 100% in order to accept that call to sacrifice that God has given to him. So we see two opposite people, one who is willing to stand there and say, well, well, God, I think I have it all together, and so you don't need to take care of these matters. Um, God, you know, I, I realize that, that this, this church thing is good, but I'm just going to wait until my deathbed, until I come to you. God, I, I realize that that, you know, this church thing is awesome and it's hopping and all this stuff, but, but God, I'm just not going to give these things up. And then you turn to this man named Zacchaeus who is willing to give those things up. And he says, you know what? I see that church building. You know what? I see what they're doing inside. And you know what? I see the proof in Scripture. And I know that God has spoken to my heart and my mind in that place. And God, I am not willing to give up anything in order to sacrifice that. But God, I'm going to sacrifice everything in the world so that I can reach you on a deeper level, so that I can reach you and who you are. God, because you are the most important thing that I could ever accept in this world. You are the most important thing that I could ever pursue in this world. And God, you are the thing that will not fail me, God. And you are the thing that will not, not shut down on me, God. But I am believing that there is faith here in Jesus' name. Zacchaeus was willing to transform and he was willing to sacrifice who he was in order to pursue this God that was there. It's the difference between a call to faith and a call to sacrifice. A call to faith is not something that's going to sustain you for the rest of your life because a lot of times the call to faith, you come to church and you realize certain things and you go back out and you don't change any of those things that, that you were called to in the church service, but you realize that 
the, but the difference is that when you have the call to sacrifice and you come in and you realize that, God, you know, this is going to be a sacrifice. God, I'm going to have to give up something in order to see this thing truly changed in my life. God, I realize that you delivered me from depression in that church service, God. And I, I, I know that, that that's, that's good. And God, I realize that I have to give up this thing in order to let go of that depression. It's a call to sacrifice. It's something, some depth that God will take us to and renew us in Jesus' name. And so here tonight, I realize I've been very brief, and I realize that I've done probably more teaching than preaching here. But what I am trying to just relate to everybody here is that there is a call to sacrifice on every person's life here. I have something different than you have, and you have something different than I have. But God has asked every single one of us in this place, hey, what are you going to give up in order to come to this thing and to, to pick up this word of God? What are you willing to lay down at my feet in order to pick up this word of God and see your world transform? Are you ready to lay those things down? Are you ready to give up on those things? Are you ready to give up on those struggles with your flesh and with this world? Are you willing to cut those chains and those bondages free in order to figure out who I am and understand me? It's going to be a sacrifice. It's not going to be easy. But a sacrifice is something that you give up that you don't want to give up. A sacrifice is something that you say, hey, you know, I, I really enjoy these other things and I really love this, but I'm going to have to give it up. It's going to be sacrificed on the altar in Jesus' name. We could go into so many different things there as far as the Old Testament and them offering up animals and that sort of stuff because that was a sacrifice. But in reality, we must be able to sacrifice ourselves in order to dedicate ourselves to the kingdom of God. What's the one thing in the world that if you were to give it, you'd be giving up your world? That's a tough question to answer. And when you do answer it and you think, man, am I willing to give that thing up in order to receive God? That, that, that can be very tough. Whether it's a job, whether it's financial security, whether it's music, whether it's movies, whether it's something like that, whatever it is that is pulling us away from God, we must be willing give that thing up in order to dedicate ourselves to God. It's a call to sacrifice. Are we going to be the first young ruler? Or are we going to be the second young man who listens to Jesus and obeys his word at that point in time? And so I'm believing tonight that God has continued to work on every one of our hearts, and I, I want everybody to, to consider this. And so if we could all stand in conclusion here tonight. Genesis 22-2 says that God said to Abraham, take now your son, thine only son Isaac, whom you lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you of. Now, I, I know that we all know this story. It's been talked about many times, but Abraham has to offer his one and only prized possession, his son. God asked him to say, hey, take your son up to this mountain and kill your son and offer him as a sacrifice for me. Now, Abraham, I, I can understand thinking this, man, that's my son. You want me to kill another human being in order to, to worship you and that sort of stuff? And he has faith, and so he obeys God. And he says, God, you know, I don't know what's going to happen here, but certainly I will obey you because I know that if I do obey whatever you're asking me to do, that things will be much better in the end and things will work out in a much greater sense. So Abraham takes his son and he walks his son up that mountain and he is just about to kill his son when a ram comes through the, the bush there and God says, you know what? I know your heart now. I know who you are and I understand what you are doing here. And so Abraham takes that ram and he offers the ram instead. But it can be compared to us today. What one thing are we prizing so much that are we willing to take that item up the mountain and sacrifice that before God so that God can take that from us and replace it with something that is much better and replace it with something that can do great things. I can tell you so many different stories about how God has transformed lives and renewed different things because people were willing to accept that call to sacrifice, willing to accept beatings from the parents, willing to accept things from, from family members, letters in the mail saying, you are disgusting. I can't believe you're part of this cult. I can't believe you're part of these churches, these things that are very hurtful. And yet they were willing to sacrifice their life and say, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter because I know my God, and he is more real than anything else that is around in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. 
So tonight, I don't know what it is. I realize again that this was brief, but I know that God has put some calls to sacrifices in our lives. And that why question that comes up so often, and we think, why, God, are you asking me to do these things? It has been answered tonight because God is calling you to a sacrifice. God is calling you to something deeper in this place tonight. And so Jeremy is going to play some music for us here tonight. And if we could all just come down around this altar one last time tonight and just lift up our hands and allow that sacrifice that is there. Can you turn it down just a little bit, brother? And we're going to just allow those things and lay them before God again. And whatever God has spoken to us about tonight, whatever things that God may be calling us to on a deeper level, we're just going to offer those up and present those to his hands tonight in Jesus' name so that tomorrow we can go home transformed, changed, and renewed in who he is, Jesus. Yes, God, I am believing that absolutely tonight, Jesus, that you have called every single person here to something that is deeper, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, and I'm believing, Lord, that you have called us beyond that faith, God, into a depth of sacrifice, God. Lord, where nothing matters in my life anymore, Jesus, where nothing matters to stand before me and you, but God, you have called me to that sacrifice. Then, God, I present these things into your hands, God, whatever it may be, my depression, God, my guilt, Jesus, my insecurities, God, with so many things. Lord, I lay these in your hands because I realize here tonight, God, that you can absolutely wash every one of these away, God. And, Lord, that if I present these to your hands, God, that tonight you will replace it with a deeper calling, God, that you will replace it, Jesus, with joy and hope and peace and restoration through so many things, God. I am believing tonight, God, that those things, Jesus, that I've held on to for far too long, Jesus, that I need to give up, God, that I need to release to you, Jesus. I pray that I would give those to you, God, right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, anything right now that is more precious to me than you, God, any riches, Jesus, any emotions, God, right now that I love so much more than you. God, I'm sorry for loving those things more than you, and God, I present them to you at this point in time because, God, you will take them from me, God, and you will renew, God, who I am in Jesus' name tonight, God. And Lord, continue to call us, God, to something that is deeper, God, to the next level, God, to the next revival, Jesus, Lord. And I'm believing tonight here that every person, God, that you are calling a sacrifice inside of their heart and their mind, God, so that in this church, God, in this community, God, in this county, in this district, Jesus, if we sacrifice, God, we will see great things happen, God, and great people reach, God, and revival in this land, Jesus, because I'm believing, Jesus, that you are so truthful, Lord, that nobody can deny who you are, God, that nobody can deny your great and mighty name. Oh, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. oh, yes, that's it tonight. Just offer those things up. Whatever God may be touching on your heart right now, just offer it up for the next few minutes. We're only going to be here for a few minutes, and you don't know what's going to happen after this. So dedicate it all to God. Give it all to him right now in Jesus' name. God, I offer my life, Jesus. I offer my name, Jesus. I offer my belongings, Jesus, to you, God, and who you are. Oh,
time put your hands together lift up your voice and shout out the name that is above every name Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God a round of applause for being such a mighty God tonight in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, go forward this week, strengthen in his name, and, and realizing that, again, you can take this stuff to your house, get into his word in your home, and, and God can receive, or you can receive the Holy Ghost inside of your house as well. In Jesus' name, yes, Sister Barb. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Certainly. Praise God. Praise God. You have to come up front, though. <laughs> All right. In Jesus' name. Praise God. It is Monica's birthday tomorrow, so let's sing her a happy birthday. Praise God. I need everybody to join in, though, because I'm not going to sing all the way into the microphone. All right. Here we go. In Jesus' name. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. 